Hi, I'm Mike Svab, and today I want to give you some tips on how to use a paintbrush. Just some little things of, you know, different ways you can move the brush or different ways of creating textures or just little tricks on how to use a paintbrush to create different effects. So for today, I've already got some paint out here from a previous demonstration. It's still good. I've got a little bit of paint on the canvas there. I've got some paint up here and I'm going to use that in this demonstration. Now, when I say how to use a paintbrush, when I talked about loading the paintbrush, that was just how to get the paint in the paintbrush and to make sure you have enough paint in the brush, okay, a fully loaded paintbrush. In this case, I'm going to do a couple of different things with the paintbrush, all right. So one of the things I want to show you uh, right away is what artists call dry brush, all right? Now, this is confusing, and, and all it really means is you're, paint, you're not painting with a dry brush. It means you're kind of dragging your brush atop the surface so you create a texture. And you can do it either, you know, this is on a board, this is canvas, or you can do it where it's gessoed white, or I could do it on top of this. So I'm going to use a different color for this. So I'm going to go with the blue here. It's stable blue. And again, you can do this from thin, medium, to very thick in any consistency, right? And obviously, the difference in the, you know, the thickness of the paint is how much it's going to cover, how much is going to be left. It's not going to really change the dry brush effect. So it's not really a dry brush. That's one of the things people confuse. All right. So I start with the thalo blue here. And I'm going to start with really thick paint. So one of the, the things you do as an artist is you either hold the brush straight at the canvas like this and put a brush stroke on or you can turn it a little bit or you can turn it a lot. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my brush a lot in this case so it's, it, I'm going to be going kind of flat with the surface and what happens and you, this is like you got to develop a touch for this right a sense of how far away you are and how, you know, how much paint you got in the brush and you work at it and you get better at it. But the idea is when I drag this brush like this, you can see what happens. I get this kind of broken effect. If I push too hard, so I get that. Now if I want to, I'll go to a round brush, same thing, this is a round brush. It's called a round. There's filberts, rounds, flats. This is a flat. This is a round. And now I'm going to drag the brush so I won't get that hard edge on the outside. I'll get that kind of look. And you can see how that look is different than that. So that's, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. If you want a hard edged thing, you want a softer edge. And one of the things that I'll do as an artist and, you know, oops, other people will do is I will drag some of the paint out where I don't want it, and then I will, and then you can layer. And some artists will even mask around there so they can get it exactly where they want. I don't, I don't usually mask much, and by masking I mean putting something there so the paint doesn't touch. You can use tape, you can use masking fluid, you can you know, use a piece of paper, there's all kinds of ways to do it. but. If you only want to get it in a certain area, you would mask, okay? So that's with thick paint. Now, I'm going to go with the thinner paint, medium, we'll call it medium. So I'm adding a fair bit of water to it. And I add enough water to load the brush so I get a well loaded a fully loaded brush again so I can do a largest, the largest passage possible. And how do I know it's still okay? I can kind of see through this. I can't see through that. I've got a full loaded brush. Now I know it's about where I want to be. Oop. I got paint in the ferrule here, which is going to end up everywhere. So I'm just wiping it out. So now when I do this on here, it's the same thing. I try to drag it and what's going to happen 
you're going to be able to see through that a lot more. Okay? Now I'm going to go really thin. And each one of these comes out differently. And you can thin this out, you know, until you've got like 99% water or plus. But when it starts running, so now I've got quite a bit. So now this is harder to do, so you got to get it on a really steep angle if you can. And the more texture you have, the better this works. So when you get a really rough texture, it's easier to do this. So the idea is just to create this kind of dry brush effect, right, from very thick, medium to very thin. So now what happens is this is much more see-through, obviously, than that there. It's the same pigment. It's phthalo blue, but I get a different effect. So that's one of the ways you use a paintbrush is to do dry brush. That was dry brush, right? Trying to get that kind of dry brush effect. And with practice, you can get really good with that. You know, you get everything set up really well, and you can get like a really, really good effect. And I use that in a lot of different places when I'm creating textures, right? In the water, on this, you know, if you're any, any place you want to get that kind of texture like that, that's where you might want to use dry brush. And the thing to remember sometimes is you do it in several layers. You don't do it in one layer, you, you apply several layers so you kind of build it, you change the color, you, get, you can get a lot of neat effects that way. Right? Now this is the round brush again, okay, and I don't know what number it is, it's uh, number four. But you can see, you know, how thick it is there, all right? So this brush, if I go back to the thin paint, oh, let's switch colors. It'll just help make it more obvious. I'm going to go back to the palette here and mix up some red. This is the magenta, quinacridone magenta. I want to get this really thin. This is really thin. So when I put it on, I'm just going to make random kind of brush strokes with it. All right? Now that's really wet. Now I'm going to go back to the blue. This is very wet. This is like very thin paint. You can see it's going to drip. And one of the things I want to have happen here is I want to have this soften in to this. So I get kind of a gradation happening from one to the other. And I'm leaving some of the white as well. So what happens here is you get these kind of subtle effects, the granulation and then you get some gradation. And this is very wet paint into wet. So it's different than what I did there, right? So now you can see, you know, some, some of the things that happen in painting are what the paint does. You have to be observant what the paint does when you put a certain kind of brush stroke on or you go in a certain direction. This way, obviously, I can do more, you know, kind of drawing things than with that. I can't do a dry brush while I'm trying to, trying to do drawing things like that. Dry brush is flat. This is the paint brush up. And again, though, I'm using a fully loaded brush. So I get these drips. And one of the things I learned to do in watercolor, and if you want to paint this way, and you can do this in oil, acrylic, whatever, watercolor, if you paint this way, one of the things you want to learn to do as an artist, you see I've got this in my hand. This is paper towel. <laughs> I was going to say cloth, but it's paper towel. And I've got this in my hand. This is very absorbent. This is very absorbent. 
I recommend almost all the time you use your paintbrush to paint with and to take paint off. So if I have something on there, I will take the brush and go like that and just, if I don't want the dark where the drip is, I won't take a cloth because if I, if I take a cloth and you do this, you will take too much of it out. So you see, you see the difference, what happens there? So I'm using the brush here to take it out and that'll basically stay the same. When I use a cloth, you pick up too much, okay? The other thing about stuff like this, and this is paper towel game, is if your painting's a little bit dry, you'll leave little bits of this in your painting and those will cause black spots in your painting over the long run because this is a um, acidic paper, all right? Now, that's that brush. Now I just want to give you an idea. This is a house painting brush, or what you would use to paint a house, or you can paint anything you want with it, but people think of this as a house painting brush. So this bristle is a little bit stiffer, but it'll move a lot of paint. So I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to load it up with the uh, phthalo blue, kind of a medium consistency. And I'm going to do this one on flat. And we're going to kind of do something similar to what I did there, but we're going to do it on flat and we're going to do it with a medium consistency, right? When you're painting, you want to use the biggest brush possible, right? That's the best way to go about this. So you kind of look at the surface you've got to cover and then you get the biggest brush because it's the easiest way to apply the paint is to go with the biggest brush. You can get a better effect more easily than with a small brush. So I've got a big pile of paint there. It's kind of a medium consistency, so it's not going to run, right? Now I'm just going to paint this a little bit over this, see how far I can go. You can see where it starts to dry out, so I go back, reload the brush. Go back, reload the brush. Now I've got it a little bit over the brown here, but you can see the white coming through. I'm going to rinse that out. Okay, so I've rinsed this brush out now, all right? And I'm trying to dry it as much as I can by doing that. I don't want it totally dry. I just want to get it. I want the brush to take some of this paint off. So I'm getting as much water out of, out of it as I can. So now I can do an effect with the brush where I'm removing paint. So I can start on either side and I'm going to take the brush. It's, it's wet and I'm just going to drag it through. Okay? So you can see what happens with that. And now that's with that brush. I can take a little brush and I can do the same thing. Say, start on this side and pull it through. So now I'm picking up paint as I go and depositing it and picking it up and depositing it, right? And it's not a, it's not a thing where, you know, you're going to do exactly what you think you're going to do, but what you're going to do is you're going to use this brush instead of this to create a soft edge and to paint into wet paint without using any paint. So I'm basically lifting paint, right? So I'm doing the opposite of what you think artists do. So I take the paint out of the brush and I create whatever it is while the paint's wet by lifting paint out. It's another way to use the brush. And in acrylic, I do less of that than I do in oil, but I do it in watercolor as well. In all painting, right, you put paint on and you remove paint to create certain effects. The brush will do all kinds of different things. Now another thing, my paper towel here. Now I suggest if you're going to do this, you do this with a cloth more so than a paper towel. And again, I've got medium thick paint. I just want to show you one more thing. So I'm taking the paint from here. And this 
It's not a brush, but this is a brush effect. It's called stamping, right? So you start to create effects that way. So if I stamp into that, I get that. If I take a big brush, which I do quite often, I have a technical term I invented for this. It's called smooshing. Smooshing the paint, because people used to say, what the heck are you doing? And I say, well, I'm smooshing paint. So take the brush like this, right? And I use it the same way people will use that. So let's see. Yeah, we'll go with the red. So I, and I'm going with thick paint this time, right? And I will do this. And so I'm picking up some of it, removing some of it in other places, right? Now I'm going to take the paint out of the brush, dry it out, and I'm going to do the same thing, smooshing removal. Okay? So you can see what happens, right? You know, I, I get different effects by using the brush in different ways, all right? Um, sometimes I'm really, really hard on brushes, uh, much more so in oil than in acrylic. But now I've got the brush. It's got a little bit of paint on the tip, right? And this is something you learn to do in oil painting and acrylic. It's kind of a stipple kind of effect. And if you do it while it's wet, you can create a really neat gradation effect, like you get in here, from here to here, and you get the white on there. So it's kind of a dry brush effect, but it's not done with a dry brush the normal way, by dragging this way. So you get a kind of a stipple effect, all right? Now, they sell what are called fan brushes. I don't have any here, and they, they just look like a fan, and that's what those brushes are for. They're for doing this, right? And you can get really, really fine with those, and there are some helpful ideas, I hope, for creating paintings you love, and how to use brushes. I hope you found this information useful. Now, I have a handout called How to Fix Your Painting, and you can get it by clicking on the link below. Thank you for watching.